I'm live. You can see my mic because better audio quality using the Sony to uh, go to YouTube. Today, I wanted to talk about the recent Supreme Court decision about apparently church is not essential, but casinos in Las Vegas and Reno are. I think Gorsuch's very brief um, rebuttal or remarks for the dissenting side of the four conservative justices, super disappointed in John Roberts, especially considering some of the language that he had said and some of the stuff that he had said previously about California churches meeting. And uh, I think it was a bad decision. And I'm glad to see pastors all across the country saying, hey, we're still personally going to operate under social distancing, we're going to require masks, or we're not going to open at this point. I kind of understand churches making that decision. Kind of personally wish my church would come up with other options because I think it's such a crucial time for people to come back to the building. And I think that so much time has gone by, especially for millennials and Gen Zers who were already unchurched. There's a pretty decent book about that, by the way, uh, by Dave Kinnaman. And, uh, but there's so many unchurched people that weren't in the pattern of going to church anyway. This COVID has made it worse. And I think it's going to be harder to get people to return to a building that I think they should go to. Um, I'm not a big fan of mega churches. I'm not against mega churches either. I think it's important to have community in your homes and in your neighborhood and in your schools and all that stuff. Um, but there is something about meeting in a church and having communal worship and interacting with other people um, from other bath backgrounds and ethnicities and countries and um, even testimonies, right? Like everybody has a different uh, Christian experience and testimony and where they've come from and what they've been saved from. So all of this to say, I've been thinking on it this week. When I read the decision, I thought it was atrocious and awful. And I think that the the dissent said it well when they said, you know, the First Amendment talks about the right of gatherings, the right of free speech. It doesn't talk about your right to play blackjack. I personally like to play blackjack. I'm not that good at it, but it's fun. Uh, when I've been in Vegas before, I've played. Uh, my mom likes the penny slots. My So do my grandparents. They even like play the moment they get to the airport. But I have a problem with the Supreme Court for some reason acknowledging that casinos can be at 50% capacity, but churches cannot. Um, I even have a greater problem, I think, with the government regulating anything that a church does. And I think that that's where you'd hope that pastoral leadership and leadership within the church and personal responsibility would take shape because I think it's really weird and scary when the government starts to infringe on what religious organizations can and cannot do or what they can and cannot say from the pulpit. That's another conversation for another day. And the decision of, well, casinos can operate, that's okay, kind of spurred in my mind an idea. And I think that Sheldon Adelson, he's, he's a um, brother of the Jewish faith, but he's pretty friendly with conservative Christians. There are other people in Vegas that own and operate casinos that, you know, donate to both sides of the aisle. I think it'd be a great idea if casino owners could say, you know what, on Sundays at 11 a.m., Calvary Church of Las Vegas, you guys can use the poker room and you can socially distance in there and go ahead, have at it, have yourself some casino church. I don't know why this hasn't been done yet. I don't know if it's been proposed or not. I think it's a great idea and I think it'd be a big kind of screw you to the Supreme Court's really awful decision. This thought also had me going and uh, thinking about really the church is so much more important than protest. And I know that that might offend some people um, when I say that, but I think it's so true. I think that the body of Christ and the church as a whole and the church as a building, it's more important for people to gather there and have community there than it is for them to go to a protest. And now we're reaching the point in our society where apparently wanting to go to church or actually going to church is a form of protest. But that's not going to be praised by the mainstream media. Only if you go to a protest for certain things, um, is it okay with them? If you go to a protest for the Second Amendment, not okay. If you go to a protest for Jesus, not okay. If you go to a protest as a pro-life person, not okay. Um, but there are certain things that they have deemed that are okay and are not okay. I think, and the reason I say that, and I think it is an important important to protest. I encourage protesting all the time. It's something I talk about on campuses when I do YAF speeches around the country. I think that the church is where discussions and relationship and change should happen spiritually, within the family, culturally, and then eventually politically. 
And if you are shutting that down, if you are preventing them from helping the least of these, if you are preventing them from speaking biblical truth, if you are preventing them from levels of outreach that they can do in those places, of levels of change that can happen in people's lives, then you are, what is the point? Like, what is the point? I think that it is something that needs to happen across the country that people need to prayerfully consider how they can make an impact in their own lives and in their local policies and in their local schools and in their local churches. And of course, in the laws that are on the books and the people that choose to serve them. But I think it's a very dangerous thing to pick and choose. Well, casinos, okay. Under the first amendment, but church is not. And in the winning decision, of the, of the five leftist judges and Chief Justice Roberts, I do not understand and I don't think that they made their case uh, to argue strong enough that churches should not be allowed. Um, I think in history you have seen some of the early abolitionists, amazing Christian people, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, amazing Christian. You see the theological arguments and the, even the political arguments of a C.S. Lewis and others that there are people that are thinkers and doers. And I think that it is important as Christians to develop those thinkers and those doers within the church and push them out into those other areas of influence. And I think that that is being completely stopped and completely um, prevented at this point. I know that there are other ways we can do it. I know that there are other ways that people in ministry are actively trying to do it. But I think it's really damning for our country as a whole when you have the Supreme Court saying you can do it, but only in these places. Um, anyway, so let me know your thoughts. Seeing some people comment on Instagram Live, something I've been thinking about this week. Would you go to a casino church? I'd go to a casino church. You could like play blackjack and then praise Jesus. It's like the perfect Sunday fun day. All right, I'll see you guys next time.